going to be talking about two species and pitting them against each other. The first being the Xenomorph XX121. And the next being the Tautier. The Xenomorph, or the one we commonly know as Xenomorph XX121, is a highly aggressive endoparasitoid extraterrestrial species. They are vicious predatory creatures, with their main goal being the propagation of their species and to obliterate any other life forms that could pose a threat to them. They are eusocial, like bees, having a fertile queen as the one who creates all the others and breeding the army of drones that we see. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be talking about the portrayal of them on screen. The thing that makes Xenomorph so terrifying is not just how scary they look, but also because of how intelligent they are. They're highly aggressive, very tactical, have the ability to climb. They're very stealthy. They have a hard exoskeleton and a pharyngeal jaw, meaning an inner jaw that can pierce through bone and even metal. They're very flexible and agile, able to squeeze into tight spaces to hide. They have a whip-like tail with a very sharp knife-like apparatus on the end of the tail. The tail is also prehensile, able to wrap around places to enable them to climb, or state suspended. They have the ability to run very fast and to move very quietly. They're also much stronger than they look, and they can adapt to learn on the fly. As said before, they have a queen, and the queen can lay many eggs at a time, and the species has the ability to make a new queen if there's no queen available. The one thing that does set them apart from a lot of other aliens is their highly corrosive blood. Good God. It's gonna eat through the hole. They can weaponize their blood, which they do often. They totally understand that their blood is their defense mechanism, and if injured, they know it will hurt their enemy, or they themselves will use it as a weapon. There are many different uses they have for it as well, and they've been seen in movies using it to escape, to fight, and even passively, or even to help each other to get out of places. The reproduction method is also very weird. See, the offspring of Xenomorph are implanted inside living hosts before erupting violently from their chests or bodies much like some species of parasitic wasps. The eggs, or ovimorphs, are laid by a xenomorph queen. The xenomorph queen is much more intelligent than her drones, much larger than her drones, her arms are longer, she has a second smaller set protruding from her chest, and the back of her head is flatter, longer, and branched out like antlers. Her teeth are also much longer and sharper, and she has double-jointed hind legs. Like her drones, she has a very long whip-like tail, with the same spiky apparatus on the end of it. She's the main method to replenish the species. She's very powerful, can run very fast, although she is typically seen running bipedally, rather than quadrupedally like we see the xenomorphs do oftentimes. And speaking of replenishing the species, the xenos mature very quickly, taking what seems to be 24 hours to fully mature from the chest-bursting toddler to the adult. However, for an embryo to be planted, the face hugger, the weird human hand-like spider thing used as a vessel for the embryo, has to find a viable host. Trying to remove it means death for the patient. And the fact that it's on there in the first place means death for the patient. After the chest burster is laid successfully inside of the host, the face hugger thing will then drop off. By that time, it's too late. And the prey or the host doesn't even have any recollection of this creature having laid something inside of it. Even if he wakes up and sees the face hugger lying down right beside him. Face huggers will look different based on what prey they usually go after or what xenomorph they yield. And technically what will happen is whenever an embryo is planted in the host, the xenomorph that comes out, or at least its physical appearance, is going to vastly depend on the host that the embryo was laid in. Xenomorph XX121 is typically from the human strain or utilizes human hosts, which is why they're given a more human-like appearance. Something important to note is that it doesn't matter what the xenomorph manages to find the host for to breed, that thing is always going to be a hybrid of that thing, but it will always be loyal to the xenomorph way. With the exception of one xenomorph strain that we know of, and that was the weird gooey baby thing that thought Ripley was its mother. Make no mistake, these hybrid xenomorphs are still xenomorphs, they just look different, and will take on some of the features of the host into which they were planted. That means that Predalien, or the xenomorph, that was planted inside of Predator, or the Yaucha, would wake up on a ship
ship full of predators or yauchas and not be one of them. It would still be a xenomorph and it would make it its mission to go after every single one of them on that ship. All forms of xenomorph still have acid blood and still have the weird cylindrical head shape, but they will take on features of the creatures that they were born from. But they always seem to use it to their advantage and it never seems to ever be a weakness. The Tautier creature is a symbolic representation of the forces of nature in the movie The Great Wall. These creatures are green carnivorous four-legged horde species. They are used social like xenos or bees, and they too have a queen. There are three versions of the creatures. The soldiers, which are the most numerous, the most common of the species. They resemble hyenas. They have a head that is mostly a sizable mouth with sharp teeth and huge nostrils. They have no eyes on that head, but they do have eyes, only they're located somewhere else. Their eyes are located on their shoulders. And from what we can tell in the movie, they have the ability to see at nighttime and in the daytime. They have very sharp claws and opposable thumbs for climbing. They also have green blood. On the back of their necks, they have gill-like openings that they use for communication with their queen. They do a great job at climbing basic structures, and they can fight for a long while and take a lot of injury before getting tired. Unless, of course, they're hit directly in the eye or sliced up into pieces. These creatures also have a very high pain tolerance. Now let's talk about the other version which is the queen's bodyguards. There are usually about 30 of these huge creatures. The bodyguards are elephant sized but are shaped like gorillas. Unlike the soldiers, the eyes are on their faces like what we are used to seeing and they possess retractable frills on their shoulders. They lack tails, but they have hands strong enough that allows them to be able to pick up things like a smaller soldier of the army. They have flat faced heads. They're bulkier and more armored and their purpose is to defend the queen. They form a circle around the queen with their backs to her and they never leave her side. If the queen is in danger or something is making its way towards her, they know exactly at the right time when to unfold their frills. And their frills and faces are heavily armored so that they can act as shields against bombardment. Their frills are so strong that they're capable of withstanding catapults and sharp projectiles. These guys do their jobs well, and if it's up to them, they'll lose their life protecting the queen, making sure that nothing gets in between. Although these creatures are the bulkiest ones in the army, and they too have sharp teeth, broad shoulders, and can probably deal some mean crits, they're never seen fighting. That's not their job. Their job is to strictly be defenders. Which brings us to the queen, the last version of these creatures. The Queen Tautier is dinosaurian in appearance and twice as big as the Tautier soldiers, although smaller than her bodyguards. She is very intelligent, more so than her drones, and very strategic. She can come up with countermeasures to fight the enemies, and she commands and controls the Tautier hordes with a two-pronged sail on her head which vibrates a signal to her troops what she wants. The Queen Tautier is the sole breeder responsible for replenishing her army's numbers. She comes out to feed and scourge every 60 years, which seems to be how long it would take to build back up her army. She is fed by her fighters via regurgitation, and she's required to be fed this way to breed. She also seems to be asexual in nature, and always seems to move with purpose and with wisdom in her eyes. Now, let's think of a few different scenarios. What if we were to match up the Tauti soldier with a regular Xeno XX121? Well, for one, right off the bat, the Xenomorphs are already the more intelligent species. They're definitely stronger, and they have acidic blood, and they're so intelligent that they would learn quite easy and from early on to aim for the eye of the Tautier soldiers. They're also more durable, having an exoskeleton, they're harder to kill, and the Tautier would try strategies but wouldn't have time to even figure them out. There is no competition. A lone Xenomorph XX121 would obliterate a Tautier soldier. Now what if we were to take a xenomorph and put it up against the queen and her guards? Well for one thing, against a lone xenomorph, the guard would do its utmost to prevent entry. And one xeno would be kept at bay, but the xeno would keep on attacking. Eventually one of the guards would grab a xeno and crush it, which would be a horrible situation for the guard. Their arm would start to be eaten away by the acid. And where that guard falls unable to stand and act as a good barricade for the queen, the others would quickly take its place. If the Xenomorph was still alive, 
alive, it would take this opportunity to make quick work of the Tautier bodyguard. Now, what about the Xenomorph versus the Queen Tautier? If the Queen Tautier did not have her guard and she was faced against a Xenomorph, she would scratch at the Xenomorph and hiss at it, trying to intimidate. And at this, the Xenomorph would circle her and assess the situation. If the Queen had seen what happened to her bodyguard, she would steer clear of the Xenomorph, which no doubt would catch up to her eventually and kill her very easily. You see, the Queen Tautier was not built for fighting and certainly not built for fighting a Xenomorph. With all of this, with the intelligence and durability of the Xenomorph, it just seems like not a fair fight. Now, how about the Xenomorph army versus the Tautier army? Both the Xenomorph and the Tautier have impressive numbers and both are aggressive fighters. The Xenomorphs, however, are just much better. They are far more agile, more powerful, more intelligent overall, and on an individual level. All the Xenomorphs would need to do is to get to the Queen, which they would eventually do with success, and in essence, killing the entire army of Tautier. Not to mention, the Tautier don't have any ranged attacks to use against the Xenomorphs, and are strictly melee fighters. They use their mouth and feet for everything, and as soon as they would bite down into the Xenomorphs, this would kill them or maim them horribly. See, the Xenomorphs are intelligent enough to target the Queen Tautier. Just like they know their Queen is important, they would know that the Queen Tautier is important and would realize that she's the one giving all the orders. Soon as she's dead, the whole army falls, which is a massive disadvantage and weakness for the Tautier species. They just stop moving, and maybe they're still aware of their situation, but they're literally paralyzed or comatose when the queen is dead. This would leave the Xenomorphs to pick them off one by one with the speed of a ninja. The Xenomorphs definitely went against the Tautier. They're just far more superior as a species. <laughs> to mention their acid blood would prove a very, very interesting situation for the Tautia to face. That's it. The Xenomorph wins on all fronts. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.